Amos chapter 5. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amos chapter 5, verse 1. Hear this word, O house of Israel, this lament I take up concerning you. This prophecy in chapter 5 is delivered in the form of a funeral song as if Israel is dead. And says in verse 2, Fallen is virgin Israel, never to rise again, deserted in her own land, with no one to lift her up. Israel was like a virgin who had a wonderful future, but now she is dying. All the good that could have been will not be. 3. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The city that marches out a thousand strong for Israel will have only a hundred left. The town that marches out a hundred strong will only have ten left. Israel's armies will become weak and unable to protect the nation. For this is what the Lord says to the house of Israel, Seek me and live. This is a last-minute plea for repentance. God does not give up easy, does he? He hates to punish. 5. Do not seek Bethel. Do not go to Gilgal. Do not journey to Beersheba. For Gilgal will surely go into exile, and Bethel will be reduced to nothing. And these were all sinners for idolatry. God says, don't go run into any of those places because I'm going to destroy them. The last place Israel should run to at this point is her idols. She needs to run to God. As verse 4 says, seek me and you will live. And then verse 6, seek the Lord and live or he will sweep through the house of Joseph like a fire. It will devour and Bethel will have no, no one to quench it. The house of Joseph refers to the northern kingdom of Israel. And so he just repeats his plea for them to come to their senses and repent. Verse 7. You who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground. The court system which God established to carry out justice was unjust. Judges were letting the guilty off the hook. Meanwhile, the rich were using their influence to put the poor in prison. The justice system was a real mess because of sin. Verse 8. He who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns blackness into dawn and dark darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land, the Lord is his name. He flashes destruction on the stronghold and brings the fortified city to ruin. God can turn nothing into something. Outer space was empty until God put stars there, including Orion and the Pleiades. So he can turn nothing into something, and God can turn something into nothing and he will when he rocks Israel with judgment. 10. <clears throat> you hate the one who reproves in court and despise him who tells the truth. God loves good judges who carry out justice. The Israelites hated good judges and tried to silence them. 11. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, Though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. The bad judges took grain from the poor and gave it to their rich friends, who then sold it and used the money to buy big houses. God says, you're never going to enjoy those houses. 12. <clears throat> For I know how many are your offenses, and how great 
your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. The courts were not fair. The rich were winning all the cases because they had the wealth to bribe the ungodly judges. God saw it all. And if they thought they were getting away with it, they were making a huge mistake. 13. Therefore, the prudent man keeps quiet in such times, for the times are evil. The common person didn't say much about all the unfairness. They were probably afraid to say anything. And, you know, it wasn't a democracy, so they couldn't vote these bad judges out of office or the politicians who put them there. 14. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Notice what he says here. Seek good, not evil. Those who say, and there are some today, some Christians today, who say that we shouldn't even try to be good because we'll fail anyway. At least our motives will not always be 100% pure, according to them. And so, you know, you should be careful about even trying to be good because when you try to be good, you may end up being bad because your motives aren't quite right. That is such twisted, unbiblical thinking. People who think that way should read this verse carefully. It is clear. God says that people should at least try to be good, to make the right choices. It's our business to work as hard as we possibly can to do what God says is right. And so he says in verse 15, Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Humanly speaking, the people need to convince God that they're serious about repentance. If they do, perhaps there's still time to avoid punishment. 16. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the Lord God Almighty says. There will be wailing in all the streets and cries of anguish in every public square. The farmers will be summoned to weep and the mourners to wail. And so God's punishment will hit everyone. There will be crying in the city and crying in the country. Verse 17. There will be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. God will pass through. A lot of times when the Bible is speaking of the coming of the Lord, it means coming in judgment. God passed through Egypt when they wouldn't let Israel go free and he punished them. Now God will pass through Israel. In both cases, he passes through to bring punishment. 18. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. In the past, the day of the Lord meant he was coming to fight Israel's enemies. Here in Amos, it refers to God coming to fight against Israel, who have made him their enemy by refusing to repent. So it's nothing to look forward to. Yeah, he's still going to fight against his enemies in the day of the Lord. Unfortunately for the Israelites, they have made themselves his enemy. 19. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. You know, and if this wasn't so serious, it could be a scene in a slapstick, slapstick comedy sketch. But there's nothing funny about it. They're going to run from a lion and run into a bear. They're going to escape into their house and take a deep sigh of relief and rest their hand on the wall, catch their breath only to have their hand bit by a snake. Nothing funny here. Because God is saying, you're not, going to, you're not going to avoid my wrath, no matter where you run. 20. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? Pitch dark without a ray of brightness? And in the Old Testament, darkness pictures trouble and danger. And so the Israelites knew what God was saying to them. 21. I hate, 
I despise your religious feast. I cannot stand your assemblies. The Israelites had three major religious celebrations every year. God was to the point where he hated them. They were nothing but religious shows. 22. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. God would not accept any of their sacrifices because they didn't care about him. 23. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Sacred music was an important part of worship. However, since they didn't care about God, it was just a bunch of noise to him. It may have been beautiful singing. The playing of the instruments, you know, might have been just very skilled, but it sounded like a it just sounded like noise pollution to God because their hearts were not in it. They were not worshiping him. twenty four let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. That's what's important to God. You know, the Israelites thought that they could separate their worship from their private life, but they could not. If we do not live right, or at least care about God, our religion and our worship is meaningless to Him. You can't separate your private life from your public worship or your worship of God, period. Because worship of God is worthless without a heart for God that affects your everyday life. 25. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the desert, O house of Israel? Israel's relationship with God was never primarily a result of them bringing the proper sacrifices. It was never about that. When they and God were getting along, it was because they cared about him. And yes, they brought sacrifices when they failed or they wanted a fellowship offering or something like that, and that's fine. But the reason they were getting along is because they had a heart for God. 27. Therefore I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is God Almighty. And God had punished his people in smaller ways, trying to get them to repent. It didn't work. Consequently, he announces that their final punishment is on the way. They would be removed from their land. And we'll pick it up in Amos chapter 6 next time. Until then, so long everyone.